What about this comedy thing, man? I've been getting a it's lot time. of calls. It's time. Been getting a lot of calls, and you know, it's been a while. It's been a yes, minute. It has. It's been a minute. So, I don't know yeah. what y'all thoughts on. You know, y'all ever thought about getting back on stage, bracing that mic, the roar of the crowd, the laugh of the crowd, the spitting of the soda water. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> yeah. Is it? Better look out for. Oh, 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 wait a minute. I saw something. Uh, okay. oh, we got a line outside already. Okay. Yeah, we got quite a few in there. Somebody, somebody, heard, somebody heard we were coming on Instagram, Snapchat. Yeah. yeah they heard we were going to be down here. The Showstoppers finna represent. Yeah. The Showstoppers are comedy. The Showstoppers are comedy. The Showstoppers are comedy. The Showstoppers are comedy. The Showstoppers are comedy of a group of comedians. I like to consider us as family. Myself, Big Mike, my main man. Timeless T. My lady on the mic. Queen B. Dupree. We are the showstoppers of comedy, and we just do what we have to do. What the old folks call it? Spiffy? No, they, the, they call it a uh, snag. 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 <laughs> <laughs> looking real snag. <laughs> Snazzy. Showstoppers of Comedy got started uh, maybe about 15 years ago. Uh, we all were young comedians at a place called the um, Comedy Act Cafe. Well, like I said, we start as a family. You know, we all uh, came together years ago uh, in the early 2000s, late 90s, and I think we kind of met just all us out here trying to do our own thing, trying to establish ourselves in this comedy world. The group came about through meeting Timeless T and his manager, our manager, Johnny. And we sat down and we realized we had common grounds. We came together, met, did a few shows, and, you know, the chemistry was so good, you know, we just like, hey, you know, we just stayed together. We, we, we continue to do our thing, continue to work at our craft. Giving the people what they need and what they want. Us four kind of just stuck together and became a family. So that's how it started. You was blocking that night, though, because the I one little young myself. gal in there uh -huh. that was looking at me, remember, Queen was blocking that night. Uh, the one Queen that was always blocking. Wait a minute, about hold on. Always. I'm looking out for my brother's Queen best interest. Queen always blocking. She don't want no other women to get a hold of her brother D. That's brother. right. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> She was blocking that night, dog. I That's right, I know, I know. That's right. I'll stop y'all when y'all wrong. Timeless T, he's, um, I've known him um, for quite a while. He's actually my brother. So as I was promoting him and um, bringing him up in different shows, I met them, kind of formed the group, and that's when I formed the Showstoppers of Comedy. That never was a dream of mine to be a stand-up comedian. I enjoy writing. I enjoy writing scripts, uh, short plays, I, I never really wanted to do it, never set out to do it. Uh, it's kind of a natural thing for me. In 98, I started doing gospel plays, and I realized that the funny parts, um, comical parts, is what I wanted to do. So I decided to say, you know, let's try this at the Comedy Zone. I was involved in the church, and I wrote a lot of church comedy strips. And, and I met a friend, and that he was in comedy already. He was doing stand-up. And he came to me, he said, hey, man, you you know, your plays are very funny. You ever thought about doing stand-up? And I say, I never thought about it, you know. It wasn't something I wanted to do. I just wanted to write, you know. One of my coworkers uh, thought I was hilarious, and she knew the owner of the club. And she contacted the owner and said, I know this guy. He's extremely funny. You should put him on the show. And the owner calls me up, and he's like, I got a show this Saturday. I want you to come out and do it. I agreed to do it. And... Uh, it's been doing it ever since, man. It kind of just worked out for me. It was a natural fit for me. So just been doing it ever since. They had an amateur nights at the Ritz Downtown Historic uh, Ritz Theater downtown Jacksonville. And uh, so, you know, I started, I'd give it a try. And a little nervous, you know, I never stood in front of the crowd. You know, I made them laugh, and that's all, that's all it's all about, you know. Anytime you make somebody laugh, you're always winning. In 2000, I transitioned as a stand-up comedy. And I went to the Comedy Zone with a workshop. They pulled me out of the workshop, and I've been on stage doing comic ever since. Never finished the workshop. What's your name, boo? Ooh, say it again. Ooh, say it again. Ooh, say it. 
<laughs> kind of like Mufasa. You know them cartoons be nasty as hell. They be having a little children looking at the cartoons. Mufasa. <laughs> Mufasa. That was, she was coming. The hyena was having an orgasm. You knew that what was going on. And look at SpongeBob with his little gay ass and a little short, little, little short song. And Ryan, I told you, I tried to tell my, tell my grandma, you know, now you can talk into the phone and say Google. You can Google, you know, you can Google, tell Google what you want. Google, give me, Google, what is, how you spell this? Google, where this at? Google, how you get here? She in there talking about Google, what Miss Johnson doing down there? <laughs> I, I seen the pastor go down there last week, Google. Google, what Miss Johnson doing down there? I said, Google, don't answer that question. <laughs> uh, this is my real voice and my real legs, man. <laughs> Shit, it was like, I know he too and that for real. Nah, this is it for real. Uh, Y'all in the relationship? Those, those two? Okay. I just need some relationship advice, that's all. That's why I was asking. Got in the argument with my girlfriend on the way over here. And y'all tell me if I'm wrong or not, you know. Now all I said to her was she need to get her tools tied. She said, that's all I said to her. To my girlfriend, you need to get your tools tied. She asked me why. I told her, girl, my wife don't want no more damn kids. What makes me love it and want to continue doing all these years is people. Like the way you can bring uh, change in someone's life. Um, just the energy of it when you when you go on stage and, and people are laughing and that energy around it is just awesome, man. And, and just... Um, to be able to bring laughter to people's lives is feeling like none other. Seeing people come in the room and taking their minds away from whatever they got going on, because everybody dealing with something nowadays. So putting a smile in their life, not on their face. Man, the, the joy of comedy just is, 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 is the people. You know, to, 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 to the reaction back from the crowd, the reaction back from the people, when, you, when they, they can relate to you because you know, we all go through the same things. Yeah, we got, we grow up different. We come from different backgrounds. We all raise different, but we all experience the same thing. And when you on that stage, and you know, they there, and they and they they on the edge of their seat, waiting to hear something that they know you like. You know what? He's I know he's gonna tell me something that that Big Mama don't did, and that you know, uh, poo poo them, Ray Ray. You know, my my boss. You know, they waiting to hear something. They waiting to. See, the, the, something to lift them up. It's an empower. It's a, it's an uplifting, and uh, that's what we do. We uplift people. We make them laugh. We make them forget about even at that hour show that we on. They forget about everything right there. They just all they just want to laugh and enjoy themselves. Yeah, they leave there. They may go back to their problems, but for that one hour, hour and a half, how long we got their attention? Uh, you know, we 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 really uh, therapeutic. You call it therapeutic. It's a therapeutic session for one hour. That's what comedy is. You know, it's pressure being, being with a black woman, but pressure. That's pressure on you, man. That's pressure all the time being with a black woman, man. It's pressure even with simple things like taking a bath. Ooh, there's pressure on you, man. See, when you're in there, they setting you up. That's pressure, Mo. Taking a bath with a black woman, that's pressure. They setting you up. You all in there, you trying to show out, too. You know, I'm talking about you doing it like how Big Mama taught you. <laughs> you washing all in there. They setting you up. You doing all that, Miss Lady. You washing everything, trying to show out for a pressure being with a black mom. You doing all that, boom. And she say, uh, then she hit you with this here player. Uh, you gonna wash your face? You get ready to go wash your face. She hit you. You look nasty ass, man. That's why you can't get your face to clear up. To have a nine to five and do comedy is uh, it's a real struggle, man. It's, it's a struggle because um, you can't do something part time expecting the full time benefits from it. When I'm at my day job, that's the day Barbara Dupree. When I'm on stage, that's Queen B. That's Two different, totally different people. You, you you can't be the same person because comedy take you in a whole nother realm. You have to get in a whole nother mindset. Uh, I could I could be honest with you. When I'm not on stage and I'm not performing, my 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 sense of humor is even different. You know, I, I don't. 
You know, a lot of people think just because you're a comedian, you just go around giggling and laughing and, and joking all day. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like it's hard at times because you br sometimes you bring it over. It bleeds over into each other. So you just have to stay grounded, know what you're doing, and put on your comic face, then put on your business face. Like that's one of the struggles that I have in, in corporate America is like getting people to take me seriously uh, when I am a serious person. That's my alter ego. That's that's for me. That's where I get my you know my relaxation, my joy and stuff. And so you know I'm a little selfish when it comes to that. I don't want everybody to take that you know to take it for granted because I take it seriously. And I feel if I if I share with everybody, they'll take it for granted. And so, you know, I, I kind of like having that alter, that two lives, you know, two different people. I kind of like that. I really do. They got the craft beer. My first time, you know what I'm saying? I just got into the craft beer thing, you know what I'm saying? Because I, you know, I didn't know what craft beer. I said, damn, they got beer with cheese in it? It's craft. Is this cheese beer craft made of beer? Man, you know, oh, all that'll work. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. whatever ever since the janky promote. Yeah. <laughs> Not the janky promote. Not the janky. Yeah. Since the janky promote. Oh, like, man. Like, yeah. My favorite experience would have to be when we went down to three different cities, the same city, when we went down there with the janky promoter. He was the janky promoter. <laughs> He was like the worst promoter ever. If you ever wanted a promoter to promote a show and you just wanted your money to go down the drain, you would hire him. The janky promoter is, um, <laughs> the janky promoter. <laughs> now, which, which janky promoter? <laughs> On the road trip. Yeah, yeah, we. How do you remember that? Oh, let me see. Let me see how I remember that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> let me see. We were driving about three hours. <laughs> That's all I know. We were driving about three hours. We got to this town that we both been doing the show. That we both been promoting the show. <laughs> it was like we went to Rockledge, and then like right across the street was another city. And then when you crossed the street, it was another city. They were all like right there. We had no idea where we were, and uh, we get there and. Uh, we were doing ro radio promo, and uh, we went to, like, the oldest radio station ever in history. And uh, they had been advertising the, the show all week and come to find out they were on a damn AM station. And, you know, we're on AM stations. Who, nobody listens to AM. I can't remember the radio stations because the radio stations was just as jooky as the promoter. I mean, one, we had cats all over the place. And then we left there and went to another radio station, but it seemed like it was a cat litter box. I don't know what radio station, but they had chickens in there or something. I think they had chickens in the radio station. And and uh, you go back there, you had a room, and you couldn't go. I remember a room, you couldn't go back to this room. They had that blocked off. And... Uh, and I think I don't was it a, I think it was was it a radio station in a morgue or a, a mortician or something like that like you could they had dead bodies in one room and then the radio station in another room and so you, you know like don't go back in there don't go back in that that room right there we we preparing the body I said okay no problem but at the end of the night we came out and gave him a show you know I mean at the end of the day we came out and did what we had to do and uh, you know sometimes you run into those situations you know that's part of the business sometimes you do it ended up being a good turnout actually um, when we got to the, the venue and uh, but just that whole experience but Johnny kept it cool he put us at the bar he made sure we had our drinks and when I say drinks we had whatever drinks some grown folks drink and we got ready to do our show and we did our show well so back to the comedy man mm -hmm. I mean what do what, what y'all feel like you know y'all feel like getting together and doing something again I'm sorry and I be awesome yeah, I mean, it'll be, be awesome. Great, yeah. You know, you know, I back, you know, you know, it's in our it's blood. It's in our blood. We, you know, and no matter what, how we try to, we, you know, we all busy. We got our own lives, thing, other things going on. But you know, there's nothing like being on that stage, mm -hmm. racing that mic. You know, and I kind of miss it. I don't know about you guys. I, I kind of miss it. You miss it. Yeah, this I kind of miss it. This is better than sex. Well, well, hold on. Oh, gee, oh my God, this is just delicious right mm. there. Oh, don't. Uh -huh. Well. Yeah. What about? Hmm. What you got, John? Hmm. Let me think for a minute. Okay. I mean, maybe do a little. We did a little. Maybe, a little open mics, like you know, just something we can something. do. Uh, 
do a little shows here. What about a reunion show? Oh. That, that, hey, now, that, now you're talking. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah, but yeah. you saw how... Um, so I put new addition back on the map. I know, right? Hey, hey, well, you know. Yeah. 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 Oh, my goodness. How do I prepare for my show? You know, if my pre preparing for my shows are different. You know, it all depends on the show, uh, really. Um, if I'm doing a show by myself or if I'm doing a show with my fellow comedians, you know, you, I prepare different. Um, I, like, I like to be left alone. You know, I like to try to have my thoughts to myself, you know, so I kind of like get into my music. No, I usually try to prepare like a week ahead of time. I usually, um, I prepare a lot in my mind, kind of rehearse a lot in my mind. Then the night before I go through the entire set and just talking to myself um, in the mirror, working on facial expressions, because a lot of times the facial expression is what sells the joke. Um, it can't be just trying to figure out different nuances to do with the face. Should I change the voice? That kind of thing. So I usually start a week ahead of time getting prepared for my set. You know what else out of control? These damn bobcats. Ooh, man. You know that's when you done passed the cougar. You a damn bobcat now. Them old ladies, boy, they, they going hard, dog. Pretty fella like you, boy. Oh, yes, sir. Player, they all on you, dog. And they gonna blow your mind with words you ain't never heard before. See, they'll run up on a young player like you and say, come on and get this cootie cat. I have people watch. I like to get there early and I don't, I don't study. I don't write anything down. I never have, I don't know how to. I never developed that. Um, I don't knock nobody else that do, but mine just drops in my spirit, it comes natural. So I get there early and I watch the people and then whatever theme we going on, meaning if it's the Halloween theme, if it's Christmas, if it's an all white party, whatever thing we set aside to do, even our Southern tour when we went down South, I put that in my mindset and when I get there, it just flows. I got that, look at me. Do I look like I want something that you gonna call hippie food? What, 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 what? Someone that said hippie? I seen someone that said some green leaf. I ain't no damn carrot. I need some beef and some meat and some grease shit on that menu. Now, Mo, I'm gonna need you to do that next time I come down here. I done put on my good damn hair and came out here for you. It's about to be so lit. I don't even know why. I don't even know why. No. I feel good. Um, it's, it's been a it's been a long time. It's been um, a long time. A lot of work. A lot of schedule changes. A lot of adjustments. It's it's so much work that goes on behind the scenes uh, when you're preparing for a major event. You know, because you have so many different schedules, you have to try to coordinate. You know, to coordinate to become one, we need to make this come live. So, how do you get 15 people in one place at the same time when everybody has so much other stuff going on? You know, family life, your work life, and you know all your special events life, like you know supporting the Jaguars, going to the Jags game on a Sunday, um, college football on Saturdays, and so it's it's a lot of planning. But you know, at the end of the day, I think it's um, it always turned out to be the best. That's what I'm talking about. That's how it's supposed to be. Huh? 
That's how it's supposed to be. Well, it's kind of the, the, I say there's an end, but there's no end. I think at this point, um, we're just kind of redirecting our show and roles um, in each individual life as everybody has kind of transitioned from where we first started when we originally started the show, show Stop as a Comedy. Um, it's been 12 years ago. And um, from then to now, where we're going and change, I think that's, that's where it's been. Let's take this from Timeless T. Good morning, Thomas. Yo. How you doing? I'm good. You up? I'm up. Sitting at the table. Sounds like you got some hair in your throat. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> that might be. That might. <laughs> that might be a little, little bit of that nervousness. <laughs> hey. <laughs> what time we uh? What time we gotta meet this spot? Um, one o'clock. We're gonna meet up there at one o'clock. And then we'll kind of get everything uh, prepared, preparation. Um, I'm sitting here looking at not going over the agenda, um, time, trying to make sure this timeline is right. A couple of odds and ends I need to pick up on the way over. Um, but 1 o'clock, bro. Yeah. Are you? Yeah, we definitely need to uh, make sure we stick to the agenda, man. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know how I am. You know how I am about that time. We starting on time. Whether one person in the audience or fifteen, we starting on time. Yeah. How you feeling this morning? to the building okay. so yeah queen wasn't feeling too well this morning she was saying but she, she going on she said she gonna get it so i said that's what's up that's what's up that's what you know we got to do oh yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah we got to do it regardless we got to get it regardless man so uh but um we don't she'll feel better once she hit that stage i tell you that oh yeah she, that, yeah that she'll stage, feel that stage do something to you bring it bring it Okay, I bet you're what you're going through. What you do on that stage is all you don't. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. She'll, she'll ring it off. Told her I bring old ginger ale. I'm going to spike old ginger ale. Drink this so you feel better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, 
Yeah, we definitely, uh, definitely getting ready to fight. Time passed the fast this morning. Yeah, man. <laughs> it did. Woke up and everything was go, go, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Everything moves, man. Yeah. That's good. Oh, yeah, it is. How's the, uh, how's, uh, DJ Smooth Ron? Oh, he's doing good, man. It's like we, we, been, we started last night working on some stuff, taking up this morning. Uh, we got the whole studio set up. We got the whole studio set up. Yeah. Yeah, we got all the playlists that she's going to be, you know. Oh, okay. Uh, kind of going back and forth with it now, so, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be nice. She got it. She got it. Okay, cool, cool. Well, that's good, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, we're an hour and a half away, so, man, at 1 o'clock, I guess I'll see y'all over there. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Um, I'm, uh, I'm loading up now, matter of fact. Oh, okay, all right. I want to hold you from the progress, because we need all of that. <laughs> yeah, I'm loading up now. All right, brother. We'll I'll see you shortly. Okay, man. Okay. All right. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Um, I do feel a little anxiety. I'm always it's it's always that feeling of I want everything to go right. Uh, I'm scared I might miss something. Um, the performance, just making sure you know they always on point. Never, I know they're gonna come and be on point, but it's always that uh, that. I know they're gonna be on point. Got to make sure they're on point to keep the crowd laughing and keep them just, just going, going, going. But yeah, I feel it. Y'all give it up for Big Mike. doing their thing, doing their thing, doing their thing. The other side, turn the other mic on, turn the other mic on. I have to there we go, there we go, there we go. We don't work out here, this is what, what happened to this real live show. See that bullshit y'all see on TV, where everything go perfect, that shit don't go perfect. They cut that shit out. This shit happen all the time, y'all just don't know. But they cut that out when y'all don't see it. All kind of shit be going wrong, goddamn. They be dropping big glasses and shit. But we coming in late, walking across the goddamn camera. They trying to record. So I'm just letting you know this is live entertainment. This is what goes on in live entertainment. It ain't that we get on, we got our shit together. <laughs> anyway, but if it works again, what do you guys feel, guys? What about? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I can pray. Yeah. Used to be a time I didn't even want to tell the Lord from where I was from. Because when you tell me from church, you say, oh, what about them child? I don't know what about them shit. You're fucking sorry. Shit, that was wonderful. But now, you know, we really not nice shit. We got more scared. They scared to pay us not. Hell yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they don't jack off, man. I love them, man. They're doing their thing. It's been time. No, it's been time. Not, not too long ago. Probably about three, three, four years ago now, you know. It was, he was like, hey, hey. Yeah, they were, you know. Because, I mean, I had a, had a friend. He said he went into Wick Dixie. When he went to Dixie one day, you know, came back out. Somebody don't bust his window. He pissed him right down. When he went to Dixie, I went in there for like 30 minutes. Came back, somebody don't bust my window. That was the fuck. Like, damn, can't go to Win Dixie. You know what I'm saying? Give me a Coca Cola. I'm about to bust him a window out in Jacksonville. Jacksonville, that damn rough. Say, he was kind of pissed. He opened the door and realized somebody left two giant rock tickets. <laughs> That was what it was about three years ago, man. I'm telling you, they, they, was, they was trying to get tickets away. Now you can't even get a ticket to a game no more. I'm serious, man. This is, yeah, oh, oh, Sean Khan doing his thing, man. He, you know, he finna put that here back on the map. He got that money, man. He got that long money. And, and, and for the record, it is Sean Khan, not Sean, like y'all been pronouncing. Uh, Sean Khan! No, the man's name ain't Sean either. Pakistan in America. His name ain't Sean. No Pakistani name Sean. His name's Sean. <laughs> oh man, no, no, he doing his thing. He put Jacksonville back on the map. We're glad of that, happy of that, man. You know, you know, I'm glad to be a native of born and raised here, like to be saying, you know, just glad to be back on the of love. It's a little different coming back. Cause you know, I've been on, I've been doing this stage, this, this comedy thing for a while. I think the first time I ever got on stage, I was in my thirties. Yeah, yeah, wow. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm late, I'm late 40s now. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting like the women, they don't even want to tell their age. I'm like the women, I'm late 40s. I don't even, I ain't gonna even tell you a number. <laughs> but it's different, it's different. Cause I remember, I remember back when I first started coming and getting on stage, you know, I used, I used to be all over the stage. I'm talking about, I used to get the stage, you know, I used to come out and run, that just wasn't good. I used to come out running and flipping. Hopping, you know, all rolling over, you know, you know, you know, you know, yeah, yeah, oh, I'm just, she don't play some of my shows, y'all didn't know. But, uh, but now it's, you know, you know, before this, a lot of shit you can't do no more. <laughs> I mean, some of y'all don't understand, I know, I know some of some young folks are here, got some young, but we got some people here that's a little mature. How many of y'all ready to take a pill before you start hurting? How many don't take a pill? I mean, you know, take your for you to stop. Let me go take this down. I already know. <laughs> you got to rub something when you sit on the side of the bed and it ain't even hurt yet. <laughs> let, me, let me go on the wall, warm this knee up and then warm it up. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what you know. Shoot, you know when you get to that age, man. You got to take a pill. How about, how, about, how about when the weather changes? Did anybody get hurt when the weather changes? Oh, yeah. God <laughs> Boy, it must be partly cloudy today. I think it's partly cloudy, but my back killing me today. Oh, oh. Yeah, man, when you get up, I'm telling you, it's heavy. And quit telling you, don't quit lying to yourself. I hear people talking about old 40s in the new 20s and 30s. No, the fuck it ain't. Now, shit, the same goddamn 40s. Only difference is I got insurance now. I can go to the doctor and get a prescription. That's the only difference. I'm still hurting. Shoot, yeah, man. That's no, that's no. I'm going to go to you too. Say, now, most y'all may not want to admit this, but when you go to the bathroom, it's different. <laughs> yeah, oh, Lord, yeah. That's yeah, what I said too when I went to the bathroom. Oh, Lord. Because I, when I was younger, you know, because when you're young, you eat all kinds of shit. You know, we young, burn your calories. And I used to get constipated. And when you get constipated when you're young, you put you push, you push right through it. Oh, come on now, you know you you, 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 had, you had good strong booty muscles. You push right through the constipation. Like, yeah, yeah. That's how it is. I tried that shit on for that. I damn near got a dirt. Like, oh, no. Damn my head. Somebody give me a stool or something for this. Oh, this shit hurt. Could push through it no more. Oh man, that thing hurt. That's another thing, man. It's 
Men go to the doctor, get checked, get checked, get checked. Men get checked. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all don't get checked, man. I'm telling you, there's no need. Don't let your pride kill you. Don't let your pride kill you. Go and get checked. Yeah, I know. No, I know as a man. I'm a man. I understand. You don't want nobody back there. I only let, I only let my woman play right back there. No, what, what are you doing? No, 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 we ain't, no, it ain't going down like that. <laughs> it ain't going down like that. But now I'm going to get you. Last time, but you know what? It's funny. Last time I went and got checked, the doctor, something seemed strange. <laughs> Be careful. I don't know. You know, you see, the, the, the whole, the whole uh, 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 little exam seemed to count strange. It seemed mighty more happy. And I ain't saying nothing wrong. It just seemed like the happy to put in the hand of somebody. You know what I'm saying? I didn't realize about two weeks later, I went through one of them constipation spells. I got me a little stool, saw me, had a little bit together. I found a class ring, I had to call them up, hey, Doc. <laughs> some of y'all got it, some of y'all got it, yeah. Yeah, you forgot to take your ring off for a minute, you know, that test. <laughs> oh, man. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I'll tell you, I'm having a good time. Living the best days, living the best life. But the song says, I'm living the best days. Yeah, that's it, that's what it is. And living the best days. I won't go tell Ron to play it when he talks. I ain't going to tell you. But anyway, but, uh, yeah, man, I was on. And I was uh, dating on. I was dating this. I'm going to tell you. Uh, man, so, I, I just understand young people, young people. Y'all, they just, they just, they, they were holding them. I was trying to talk to this young girl one time, you know, she, she was in there getting some uh, garlic crabs. Got a little garlic crab, right? I don't know what I'm talking about. She was in there getting some garlic crabs. So, you know, I'm trying to talk, hey, how you doing, Miss? How you doing, Miss Lady? How you doing, Miss Lady? And, you know, they ain't got no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I say, all right, what you want to talk about? Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to get my money up, trying to get paid, trying to get my money up. <laughs> I want to have that Arab money. I said, oh, yeah, you want the Arab money? What you, what you do? I, you know, I do a little hair, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to get that Shaka Khan money. And I'm like, ooh, I'm trying to get that Shaka Khan money. That was, I'm trying to get that Shaka Khan money. So I'm thinking to myself, like, damn, Shaka Khan had a damn hit in many years. She's trying to get Shaka Khan money. Come to find out. This little retarded, ignorant ass was trying to say Shaka Khan money. Excuse me, boy. I left my ass right there in that garlic crab tray, the potato, the corn, the sauce, and all that. She left me right there. I said, hey, got time for this. I ain't talk to them no more, man. I can't talk to them. Oh, man. I love it. I love it. Tell you about getting, another thing about getting over the two, man, is sex life change. Sex life change. Women, y'all quit putting all that pressure on your man. He can't do it like he used to when he was 20 and 30. He just hang. He, he tired. He tired. Y'all went, y'all went hell out of a man that didn't want to perform. So come on, give him a break. Give him a break. Yeah, damn. I remember because I know when I was, when I was younger than I am. You know what I'm saying? But you come, y'all ain't know what I'm talking about. You take the women. Back then, you take them with one hand, you pick them up. Walk around the room with them, you know what I'm saying? Put them in the wheelbarrow. Yeah, she do all that when you when you when I was in my late twenties. Shoot, I'm forty. I'm trying to negotiate a gap. Okay, now how, how long? How long? How long you want to do this? I mean, you know it's nine thirty. I tried to be sleep by tea. <laughs> last time, last, last time she turned me over. <laughs> she, she was on my back. I'm like, I said, oh, all right. You, you know your baby. <laughs> Neither one of us wanted to get, get the rag. <laughs> you been that mother talking about rock, paper, scissors, who gonna get the rag? Rock, paper, scissors. Oh, it's your turn. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, 
Y'all yeah, lost the baby. Y'all didn't get the baby. Okay, one of them It was three, and then it was four. Okay, we're well, all right. We'll be all right. Y'all gonna be all right. Y'all get it. Y'all get it. <laughs> y'all get it. Oh man, I'm having a good time. Been doing our thing, traveling. We just came off of um, uh, seven uh, seven county tour. Like we went to Duval. We went to. Uh, See, we're in Duval with the St. Augustine, uh, <laughs> with the Palaco. <laughs> I like y'all. Y'all funny. I like y'all. Y'all a little slow with y'all kids. That's it right there. <laughs> oh, man. But I tell you, I thank y'all. But before I get off the stage, I just want to say that, you know, it's been my pleasure. And I don't know if we'll ever see it again. I'll see you again. Where I'll be on stage again. I wish you ever come to my show again. But I just want to say we thank you from the bottom. I thank you from the bottom of my heart that you thought it not robbery to come out here and spend time and take up your Saturday with the, the Gators playing and the Sippinoes playing. And yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's hard. It's hard. I, that's why it's so hard. I know y'all trying to wonder what the game is, what the, what the snow is, and stuff like that. It's, it's good. I do, I do appreciate the sacrifices, you know, you made. So I mean, I just, I just want to say that we, we are very appreciative, and I'm very appreciative that you, that you do that and come out and make it happen. And so I'm not going to hold you any more long. But without further ado, I just want to say I thank you, I love you, and that's my time. My name is Big Mike. What a sight, what a sighting night. Very uh, very special night, very emotional night. Uh, just um, very high right now. We had a great comedy show, great turnout. We're so thankful that all the people that came out and supported us. Uh, all the comedians did very well, man. I'm just happy to be with a team that, uh, that I love and treat like family. And uh, I want to give a shout out to Mason and, and the crew, film crew, what an excellent job you guys did, you know, just making us look good. So uh, once again, just stay look out for the showstopper, the comedy coming near you. Peace. <laughs>
started cleaning. Oh, hell no, I ain't cleaning up. What's cleaning up for? So he need to know what he's dealing with. So he came in the house, right? And he, when he came on in now, he kicking shit from the time he come in the living room. Oh, I know I ain't the only house look like this. You heard I'm told your house. I know it's some more other horrors in here, too. I feel it in my spirit. I'm about ready to go out of the house and get the leftovers. And he just started kicking shit coming in the door. He said, can I get a glass of water? I said, yeah, go in the kitchen, find your damn glass. Get your glass of water. So he went in the kitchen, found a glass, got a glass of water, and came in the bedroom. He said, my God, man, wait the bed. I said, just push them damn clothes on the floor. And don't worry about what damn bad at. We'll find it by the time we dive that way where the clothes was. So we in that tan it up. Oh, we did. Oh, he got my back hurt. He just tanned up. Cheering close to his. You don't even know about your mama. So he in there, he tanned it up, tanned it up. I said, oh, baby, talk dirty to me. He told me that goddamn nasty ass living room. <laughs> Yeah. 
You got that? Yeah. I'll snag a two, motherfucker. That's what I'm looking for. You snag a two? No, I can't. No, I can't date two. And when you get to partials, make sure you don't go get the ones that cement it in. Get the ones you can drop in a glass. Get them motherfuckers right there.
So I managed to give him some. How many know about the pick a book? Oh, Duval, I like y'all to hear I don't know you know about the pick a book, brother. I know you do, baby. You know about the pick a book, brother. I know pick a book, that's what I'm talking about. Any more pick a books in the house? Hallelujah, that's what I'm talking about. Pick a book ministry, that's what I'm going to talk about today. Pick a book is a hotel you pay by the hour for those of y'all who don't know. Look, yeah, it used to be one out on US 1. The hoes in the room should know about the pick a book. I don't know why the rest of y'all don't know. <laughs> So me and granddaddy went to the pickable, right? So he got up there, he tanned it up, he just up there, he just rolling. And he don't put the cane over the corner. And this one had some teeth, baby. Why I dated him, I don't know, he had some teeth. And he was just, and he was rolling. And he was huffing and up puffing and he was tanning it up. Baby, when that man got through, he was in that crease right between the lip and the thigh. And he was pressing on my pelvic bone. And when he turned me loose, I was walking like this. <laughs> I tore it up, you know. <laughs> I tore it up. Sir, no, you never got it in. You had it right there between the lip and the thigh. You tore that crease up. But could you move it over a little bit and get some pussy, please? Because my lip is hurting. I had to stop dating him because he was retarded as hell. His aim was off. I couldn't even date him no more. So now I just go to church and play with the deacons. And the deacons in the house. <laughs> oh, I love taking my dollar up there in church. Don't tell. Well, they didn't get no more than a dollar. I take my dollar up there and I have tennis sitting out like you, sis. That's why you my tennis sister, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh, I have tennis sitting. I know you do, girl. You be in church, have a little old cuts on. Mama, you kind of tits in too, uh-huh. And I take my dollar up there and I had tits up there and I just walk up there. You can tell the little old horny deacons, the basket gets shaking. Yeah. <laughs> how you doing? I said, all right, D, how you doing? I talk real loud because I don't want to say nothing in pride. Smelling like mothballs and shit. I don't want to smell that old spice. He shaking. I put my dollar in and I walk up. <laughs> Church. Don't act like the hoes don't go to church. Don't act like we don't go. Some of y'all look familiar. What church you go to today, man? What church you at? Tracy, this is St. Joseph right here. This is St. Joseph, baby. St. Joseph. You know hoes go to St. Joseph. My cousin grew up in St. Joseph. I was in there one time. We were young. My kids were young. Now, y'all just go with the flow. Hell, I don't know where I'm going. Y'all just go with me. I was in St. Joseph one time, and a girl got up and sung a solo, and they started clapping. It was an old pastor. It was an old pastor. Me and his hell. They might meet him in the usher. And he was like, don't you clap for her in here. I said, oh, sure. Come on, let's go. This mean as hell in here. I can't stay up in here. I got no hell in myself. I know I can't stay up in here. And some church you go to, yeah, we, we went from country to church. It's okay. Just go with me. Just go with me. It's just a lesson in it. It's in the Bible. Y'all know they punch in the Bible. I don't like y'all in there. I'm still trying to figure out how you gonna give your handmaid to your husband for her to hunt you when God told you you was gonna have a baby. I would have loved to been a handmaid. I've been hunting too. I've been watching you for a long time. What? Yeah, she can't have you no kids. Oh my God. Well, you call on me tomorrow till I get pregnant. <laughs> All kind of stuff was going on in the Bible back in the biblical time. I ain't gonna talk about Jesus because I'm scared. Mm. <laughs> That's my off limits, but I'm still trying to figure out how Mary explained that she was pregnant with our country. I'm still trying to explain that one, trying to figure out that one. Any Marys in the house? I thought not. No, I was only one. Only one. We're going to let her have that. We're going to, Auntie, you all right? You, you put it on me, baby. You put it on me. I, I know we got kids in the spirit. You want to tell me about the granddaddies when I get off? I, I have uncles. You know we had them uncles, too. I ain't gonna talk about my mama too much, but my mama had a boyfriend back when I was a little girl. Sean, you ain't know about this, he was too little. He used to deliver the mail, put the money in between the mail. He said, go straight to your mama. And I used to be a fat little girl looking at him, I'm rocking. I know y'all can't believe I was fat back when I was little. I know that's, that's hard for y'all believe. So I'm rocking right, he put the mail in my hand, and he look at me, he hold my hand, go straight to your mama. Yes, sir. Yes, so I'm going to go to my mama. Yes, sir. So I'm going to go to my mama. Yes, 
So he released that mail. I come in the door. My daddy said, what that is? I say the mail. He said, take it straight to your mama. Yes, sir. I'm taking it straight to your mama. Probably like nothing but bills. Little did he know he was telling the truth. The man used to lay the money in between the bills. Hello. Me and my mama go to the store. You know what? Little churn was a little go key for your mama's hoe. Can you ever churn again? Oh, I know it's a whole lot. I'm shocked. Have y'all ever did that to me? Did somebody give y'all some money? No, you never gave me shit. Did somebody give y'all some money? Y'all spend it. I don't date it broke me and that was, was all the time. I, I, I think I was scared of being a success. I ran from him. Any man that looked like he was poor and couldn't make it, I brought his ass home. And it was so funny before I got my tubes tied. Yeah, I tell all my business, it's okay, it's comedy. I was outside talking to this guy, and he did look like a monkey-ish. He was, they called him dog, and he was dog-skinned, and he looked like a monkey, and he only came out at nighttime, but that wasn't the point. That's not the point, he still was somebody's child. That wasn't the point. And my mama pulled up in the driveway, I think I was around about 17, 18, and she got out the car, she said, hey! Uh, my brain, uh, my brain, come here, come here, come here, baby, come here. She said, uh, are you fucking him? I said, no, mama, I'm not messing with him. She said, because I don't want shit running around my house looking like him. The boy was standing right there listening to her. I said, mama, he can hear you. She said, shit, I hope he can hear me. I don't want no grandchildren looking like this boy. Have you seen this boy? I said, mama, yeah, his name, dog. Right name. She went in the house and closed it up. She stayed in the house a few minutes. She came outside. She said, hey. The only thing around here fucking is me and my dogs, and I better not see you hunched up over one of them. Girl, come on in this house. I said, Mama, you embarrassed me. She said, you should have been embarrassed standing out there talking to his ass and let the neighbors see you. My mama going on in glory. Let's give it up for the ones still have their mama. This ain't nothing but some orange juice, y'all. I got to tell y'all what happened with the hunch hunch. I fixed the hunch punch, and after I got here, they said it was too weak. So butt naked Big Mike took a bottle, sis, and fixed up the hunch punch. I drank a little bit of the hunch punch, so right now I'm kinda high. I'm not gonna remember none of this shit I said to y'all later. So it'll come up to me talking about, Queen, you were so funny when you said, I'm not gonna remember, baby. I am high as hell right now. And let me tell you, the other how that is better than this how. When my two boys be sitting on the porch talking that, smoking that loud marijuana, what the hell is loud? Any of my other smokers in here know what loud is? Oh my, you know if y'all two know the loud, loud, y'all not by yourself. Anything you go buy with a label and a name on it like that, do not buy that. I gave my son a ride, my baby boy. And the police went by the car and I got scared. I picked him up and he had my whole car smelling loud. I said, what the hell is in there y'all smoking? I don't even have to smoke it, just suck it off his clothes. I'm telling y'all, if Blue Cross and Blue Shield give me a drug test right now, I'm gonna fail that shit just basically off of his clothes. I said, what do y'all do? Trying to do two half so loud. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. That's my sister. She know our, our, our baby smoked together. <laughs> Bless their heart. They ate together, played together, now they get high together. Apparently, that's the way it goes. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying it's a pattern that they have. Nobody want to go up and join in there. They don't even be ain't none of that shit. They just want to smoke loud. That's all they want to do. Where's the damn quiet shit? Where's the quiet smokes? Huh? Is that just regular cigarettes and the quiet smokes? Everybody wants to smoke so damn loud. It's already screaming. <laughs> Your lungs high, my damn hell be high. I'm like, what the heck? Let me tell you something. I don't know who the hell claims I process. Everybody shit get paid. You understand me? Y'all better hope y'all, I get y'all claims. I'm paying all that shit. I ain't gonna sit down trying to figure that out. You had an all right sitting paid. Well, Blue Cross primary. It's okay, let's go. Dad, get the money back on the back end. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I'm gonna get ready to get off of him, but I gotta tell y'all some bullshit. Why are you looking at me like that, Big Mike? Big Mike got up here and ripped that shit, didn't he? Woo! Oh my God, let me tell you, I was right there in the back. 
with this hot accessory, so y'all feel like a damn piece of chicken. Hold on.
Rebecca, stop playing. Move your ass out of the way. Run the TV. Stop playing. Like, well, you better look at his ass when you go by. You better you don't have a stroke. You better look at his ass. You so crazy, baby. You is so crazy. You know I love you. Whether you do or you don't, this is what you got. You better work with this shit. So I went to have my mammogram done. Ladies, check yourself. Check yourself. Give it up. Give it up. This is great. That's why we wearing our pink for cancer, for, for um, breast awareness, breast cancer, cancer all together. I went to have a mammogram done. I hadn't had a mammogram done in three years. I was afraid to go. This is a true story. They found a spot. I had a biopsy done, and they told me I had to come back every six months. I was afraid to go because I did not want to hear what they had to tell me. They took the piece out and sent it off and all that kind of stuff. So finally, I got a foreign doctor. I love my foreign doctors. They are so detailed. I've had a woman doctor. She like, just mash your titty and go. I had a black man doctor. He was like, you'll be all right. Keep your blood pressure down. But when I got that little foreign man doctor, he was like, look at him. I do not have a mimogram for you in the file. I said, well, I haven't had one. I'm scheduling you one right now. I said, okay. So I go over there, apparently, ladies, apparently. I did not know I had a fat dick tip. I didn't know. Some of y'all probably don't know this. Did you know your titty was fat and this? I, I didn't know this. Baby, titties, okay. I get in there, fat titty, okay. And they start mashing on my titty. So the lady went to pull the thing down and she said, come closer. I came closer. She said, come closer. I said, come closer. I still had titty way over here and she had it already mashed the thing down. So my stomach wouldn't allow me to come any closer. So she said, dip down like this and then push your titty up like this. I said, baby, no matter what you do, that titty ain't going in there. So she lifted it up. She said, I know what you're going to do. Turn sideways. And I'm going to slide the titty this way so your stomach won't stop you from getting the titty in there. This is a true story. When she finally got the titty down, she said, oh, now I know what's going on with you. You have a fat, dense titty. I said, all my life, I've had men to suck on my titties. I have yet to have a man say, that is the fattest, sexist, dense titty I've ever seen in my life. Well, needless to say, that was causing the printout to come out abnormality. So now I understand my titty is fat. I just want to give y'all that, that you don't, don't, don't let it scare you, go check it out. Before I get off the stage, I got one more thing to say. Stop not dating men because of how they look. I dated a midget. I dated a midget, it's okay. He came back right here, and he had a high top fade, and he looked like an Ewok. And those of you who don't know what an Ewok is, he looked like a teddy bear with salt and pepper hair. He looked like an Ewok. Oh, that man treated me so good. But I would not allow him to kiss me because I thought I was going to get that midget disease. Somehow I thought if he kissed me, my ass was going to start shrinking down. So a whole while I dated him, I wouldn't let him kiss me. And one day he kissed me on the neck. I bust the hell out of him because I thought I was going to get that midget disease. Don't do that. Treat them like they special, like they somebody. <laughs> then there was a man. I was working as a cashier. I'm in and out of this job. Then there was a, what? What? He looking so sexy back then. That's our manager, y'all. Then I was working as a cashier. That's your child. That's your child. Right there. That's your child. And his deaf mute came in. Apparently, my dense titties had excited him because I always have a little cleavage shown. He stood in my, my line and he said, uh, uh. I said, you and me. <laughs> he said, uh, uh. I said, okay, two dollars. I said, oh, you want to borrow two dollars? He said, uh, uh. 
Two dollars. I said, you don't get out that line, you can't even sell it for two dollars. I said, go buy an eight teeth more and come back. <laughs> They got me flushed. <laughs> Hi! This is your girl, comedian Queen V. Thank you for coming out. We had a wonderful time with the Showstoppers of Comedy for our comedy night out with the stars. Woo woo! Um, I want to thank my family for coming out, friends for coming out, everyone that saw all the struggles in us and was there from the bitter beginning to the sweet end. Love you all. Look forward to seeing y'all soon. Bye! All right, ladies and gentlemen. Stand to your feet and let's give a warm, hearty round of applause for Hamlet! Hamlet! Yeah, 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 Hamlet! 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 Hamlet!
see, they do two different rags, y'all. They got a face rag and a rag, they wash their body with. See, they teach you about hygiene, boy. They don't play, boy. That ain't you when you married, boy. They something else. They take over everything. Wives take over your house. They take your happy. They take your health. I didn't get hot blood pressure till I got married. They out of control, man. And don't get you no black white. Woo, woo. And they'll put you out over anything. Who watch you have cereals and get watched this whole? Get your ass out. I don't need another child in the house. I need a man that know how to watch his damn bowl when he gets some cereal. Who the hell put the toilet paper on like this? Get your ass out. I don't need nobody to know how to put the toilet paper on. That's why I wanted to get me a white woman, because they don't want me to break up with her easy like that. Let's play a Hillary Clinton crew that can be. Ain't no way in the hell Bill Clinton could have been married to a sister. He would have been the first president to get divorced and be paying child support. White right women don't break up real easy. I want to get me a white woman. Studies show that if you became a successful black man, you could get you a white woman. Well, my white woman must have died, cause I spent $75,000 working with student loan debt trying to become a successful black man, and I still ain't got me no black white woman. And I knew something was wrong when I saw Flavor Flay had a uh, had him a white woman. I know I looked at him in this room. How the hell he get a white woman? And I knew something had done with wrong when I saw that. I done been cutting the grass and saw some bugs look better than this room. I know I just get that damn white woman. This is crazy, man. Something done went wrong with my white woman. Tell me, I don't see everything in black and white. There's some things that are obvious, you know? I miss the good old days when you had, uh, you know, just stereotypes that fit. Everybody knew about it. You know, back in the day when we was coming up, if a white man tried to rap, he was trying to be black. If a black man didn't have no warrants, he was trying to be white. <laughs> You know, see a white man, nice muscle, like you got player, you say, hey, dog, what gym do you belong to? Work out? See a black man, be all swole like you first day, you say, hey, dog, when they let you out? <laughs> I miss the good old days. You know what else I miss? I miss the old school grandmas. Ooh, I feel so bad for this new generation now. You know, back in the day, grandma used to talk sweet to you. Nah, they talk to the grandbaby like they don't even know your damn baby. Come here, little girl. We need to try to get my ass daddy coming to get you. Grandma was out of control. Now they still in the club. They got boyfriends and sports cars and can on. Grandma was still getting pregnant, dog. Your baby never around to be going to school with his uncle. You go to pick your baby up, your baby's mom can Uncle Charles spend the night you get that time and say everything your mama used to say to you. Hell no, nah, Uncle Charles' mama need to come get his ass. Ain't nobody told Uncle Charles' mama to lay there and get pregnant. That's her damn baby. She got to get her own damn baby. I'm telling you, man. That's crazy. I'm glad my kids, I got old kids, my baby in college. I'm glad they ain't made us no grandparents yet, cuz me and my wife, we ain't ready financially. We just ain't ready, man. Ooh, I'm so sick of living paycheck to paycheck. Well, it ain't like an incurable disease. I be like, ooh, you don't want to go with me, girl. I done caught that damn debt. <laughs> I got that debt, ooh. Cuz it changed the mood. You ask most bros, you ask bro, hey, bro, what's going on? How you doing? What's good with you? Get these bills down, I'll be all right. <laughs> that don't play, man. I'm glad the weather get ready to change, to cool off. J.A. get to save on the election. Uh, but J.A. so high in the summer, I thought they had merged with the mortgage company. <laughs> and it's got to be rent and lights. Ain't no way they want this shit all together. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is too high, Kate, for you, this. I'm gonna call this dick, man. Oh, Lord, have mercy. But it had you doing all kind of crazy stuff, so you know, trying to work.
work his gate thing out. So me and my wife, we plotting on how we gonna go on family feud and win the money. <laughs> we gonna pay some debt off when we get all the money. But we was struggling, dog, because we couldn't find out, figure out how we was gonna fill out our roster. Because we got some family members that just don't understand when they say they surveyed 100 people. They wasn't talking about 100 ghetto ass black people. <laughs> So we staged a family feud competition at the house to see who we was gonna pick. So we had some answers we prepared that were kind of trick questions to see if they was gonna give some black ass answers. <laughs> First question out the gate, we said, name something people cut. My aunt run up there, he the thing, bow! They cut off the lights! <laughs> <laughs> second question, I said, ah, oh, man. So the second question we said, <laughs> complete this statement by what? My cousin ran up there, boom, by Felicia. <laughs>
like you, you think you cause I'm on the front of the dog. <laughs>
So a ding a ling was hanging out the side of the damn, hanging out the side of the shorts. And you trying to spot me. So he comes up there. I retired now, seriously. Uh, but it was good, dope, man. Dope show. I always love the energy of it. Um, it was dope, man. Just um, hard to, it's hard to let it go once you come off of that high and that kind of thing. So uh, I never eat before the show. That's why I'm starving now, man. I had the damn shakes up there. Um, but it's cool, man. I'm, I'm happy. I can't wait to see what you guys do with the film, man. I think it's going to be awesome. Um, enjoy it. My, my comedy sisters and brothers, man. Big Mike, Queen B, Rock Big. Um, it's Showstoppers of Comedy, man. So I'm, I'm excited to see where we go from here. So I'm, I'm grateful to you all for doing the film, man. We appreciate it more than you know. And uh, we're going to continue to continue to do the damn thing, man. So yeah. I'm going to need uh, Jaron to leave me that hat, though. <laughs> I had forgot. <laughs> I had forgot. Shit, go Jags, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are getting ready to wrap this up. I want to, what I want to do is bring up, and I, I really think he does deserve his due. To put on an event like this is not, it's not easy. It's really not easy doing any major event in Jacksonville and Duval County. Because we don't know plenty about stuff. We support what we want to support. We go, and that's just the truth. We go to what we want to go to. So for you guys to come out on your Saturday and pay your money, some of you to come and see comedians that you have never, you know, they're not on BC, you know, or anything like that, but you in their own right, they truly are fabulous. 
And for you to come out on a Saturday afternoon and spend your Saturday afternoon and spend these hours with a group of people, I think, I think you deserve a round of applause for that. So give yourself a round. Because I always say, nobody has to do anything. Nobody has to come and see you. Nobody has to come and sit and listen to you. So when you take the time to do that for somebody, I think that it says a lot about you as a person. So I want to bring up the gentleman who, who just made it all possible for all of us. Mr. Johnny Pride of Low Dog Entertainment. If you will stand to your feet, each and every one of you, stand, please, and give this man a round of applause. I appreciate y'all standing. As you can see, I don't dance, I can't dance. So that was just a little whatever, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, I really appreciate y'all coming out. Um, I don't do public speaking at all. I hate this. That's why you never seen me. For those of you that have been riding with us since 2010, you've never seen me on the stage. I'm not a comedian. I don't do jokes. None of that. Because that ain't easy. That's their job. But I make everything happen in the scenes in the background. And that's a lot of work. I'm going to bring them back up for a minute. Time to swing Big Mike. <clears throat> what um, Comic View, BT, all that. Somebody write jokes for them. The Kevin Hart's of the world, Jamar Lawrence, somebody write jokes for them. I've seen it for myself in the back. Somebody read jokes to them while they're standing before them. That's not the case. So with that, <laughs> that says a lot. That really says a lot. We really appreciate y'all coming out and, and supporting us um, through this long journey. Um, we're kind of transitioning, doing some things differently. We've been out the limelight for ooh, probably about a year or so. Uh, we was pretty consistent in the spot and they transitioned. So it kind of forced us out, which, you know, which was fine because, you know, things happen in everybody's lives. So, you know, for us to get back together as a group and do this show and put this on and for all of y'all to come out and support us, we greatly appreciate it. Um, no telling where the Lord will take us from this day. All right, but as of right now, the show song is singing. All right. Woo! Events, events, breaks, whatever you need, you can bring the whole package. MC, DJ, we got it. Leaders are here for you. So we appreciate it. Thank y'all for coming out and supporting. Um, DJ Smooth. Our host, Tiffany. Nancy, Brandon, Pitchers. Sound of Center. Assistant Producer Corey, my sister in law, Deidre. We appreciate y'all. Kennedy, Fabulous, Big Mike. I appreciate you. Thank y'all. Hold on, 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 hold on
I'm sorry. Uh, that I we could actually, you all are part of our documentary that we were filming. So that's why you were all were invited. Um, and you notice, if most folks that we know, uh, we didn't want just anybody to come. So I hope you understand how special you are. Um, wow. Okay. Selected. You all will be here to help us with this thing. So give yourselves a hand. <laughs> Mason, you need to say something? Uh, no, you done, you done done your thing, huh? Professionally, not like at Sears. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Okay. And also, they will be filming if you want to say something about the show or one of the comedians on film, you will be in the documentary. So if you will help out that way, we appreciate that too. All right, now, now. You DJ. all are invited up on the set. Y'all good? Okay. And then how do you do it at church? <laughs> all hard set up. All minds clear. All minds clear. Yeah. All right. Let's close out in prayer. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm sorry. Hey, hey that ain't sorry. Let's close out in prayer. We're going to do it. Let's do it. Uh, right now, Father, we, we thank you for tonight. Uh, thank you for the gift of laughter. We just thank you for each individual. Thank you for us all collectively. Give us traveling grace and mercy. Protect us as only you can, Father. For us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Great show, I recommend it to anybody, and I'm coming back again. Great job, you you do yourself a favor by coming out to see them whenever they're in town. And I might forget where I'm going, the horizon is colorfully glowing, close my eyes and my mind just opens. The show stop was a comedy, actually did, they showed, they stopped the show. Big Mike, Queen B, Times T. It was awesome. Really enjoyed the show. Great night. I just want to say it was a great show. I'm so proud of you guys. Y'all keep up the good work. And I'm always be here to support y'all, no matter what. So I love y'all. And um, just keep doing what you're doing, man. I love y'all. Big cheese out. I think that this was an amazing show. I had so much fun. Each comedian, um, very unique in their own way. Um, I, each one of them brought something very, very special to the table. Each one of them brought a laugh to the table that you literally can go home with. I have, I've learned so much about myself <laughs> through the Showstoppers tonight. And I just think that this is a wonderful opportunity for Jacksonville to really, really, really get to know these three individuals in a very special way. Thank you so much for inviting me. I feel honored, I feel humbled to have been a part of this tonight. And I just wish them all the best. I really hope that they have the opportunity to do this more and more and more and more. Y'all rock. Show stop is a comedy. Great show, I love you all, Queen. You did your thing. Timeless T, funniest. <laughs> love you so much. Big Mike, listen, after this, 
you should consider being a bartender. Minutes to the sunrise, darkness left to the unwise. New time zone, it's a new life. I don't know which drink this was. I was DJing, so I don't know. Somebody bought it for me and brought it over. Is it good? It's good. It's real good. They had a combination of them. Yeah. Good drink. Because this butt naked got me about to be butt naked, okay? Y'all recording me and I'm feeling good right now, but I'm Big Mike. When you just tired from this, come to this. Make a drink. Hello. I just want to say um, the show stopped as a comedy. The show was very uh, funny. And of course, uh, my husband, Thomas C, did an awesome job. I just want to say that I've been with you guys, following you guys for many, many years. And I just want to say that you guys are not just comedians, you're family to me. I love you all. I'm happy to see what God is doing for all of you all in you all's life. And I'm happy he gave y'all the spirit to make other people laugh. And I just want to say I love y'all and continue to do what you do. Congratulations. Um, the show was spectacular. It was better than I thought. <laughs> That's it. That's, That's all. it. You want shout out? No, no special. Oh, for you, man. shout out to my husband. I call him Big Daddy, but they call him Big Mike. Okay, hi. Um, I'm Justice, the daughter of Johnny, the uh, head of it all, the manager behind it, and the niece to Timeless T, Uncle T, formerly known to me. And I just want to say I love you guys. You guys are doing amazing and everything you've accomplished. And I hope this really takes off and goes far and the documentary comes out well. You guys mean a lot to me and I just love you both and I'm glad I'm here to support you. Bye. It's about to be so lit. I don't even know. Yeah, yeah, now she wanna fellowship. You ain't You fellowship now. Hey, super girl, girl. We gonna be the ooh, queen girl. She <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 Ha <laughs> ha!